a man who's played over 100 UEFA Champions League games for uh, Arsenal, Barcelona and Chelsea. Good evening, sis. So great to be with you and a belated happy birthday. Hi, how are you? Thank you very much. It's a pleasure great. to be yeah, we're so excited to have you joining us as well here on the Supersport TV platform to be interacting with all of our viewers, not only in South Africa, but across the African continent. So let's get stuck in. You've been celebrating on Twitter, not just for the birthday, but for Chelsea being through to the final. Uh, what's your verdict on last night's game? Well, it was a really good game. I think Chelsea are looking very solid defensively, offensively for a few months now since... Uh, Thomas Tuchel arrived uh, to the club and uh, credit to the team. They are performing fantastically well. You know, they know exactly what they are doing. They look hungry, uh, disciplined, uh, with a lot of quality when they are on the ball. So I'm very happy for the kids, uh, for the boys, because they are kids. Uh, some, some of them, they come from the academy, they're very young. And everyone is uh, doing very well. So, you know, I'm hoping for a win in the final. You know what it's like. You made your debut at 17 years old in this competition. Um, you know, the pressure on, on players like Phil Foden in the other camp as well. Just tell us a little bit about these youngsters that are coming up right now. Well, I think uh, English football, you know, have to be very proud of what they're doing and very excited for the future and for their national team because uh, there's some Euros uh, coming up uh, as well in the summer and for sure they will need uh, the boys to be doing very well. Unfortunately, not everyone can win, so some of them will be sad, unfortunately, but uh, I believe that the quality they are showing and the confidence and the, the elegance when they play, it's uh, fantastic for not English football, but for world football and for fans to, to enjoy the game. So hopefully they will keep uh, you know, progressing, uh, learning uh, and giving us uh, much joy. Uh, great for England that it's an all-English final of the Champions League as well. What are your thoughts on Pep Guardiola's Manchester City? What's impressed you most? Well, impressed me nothing because uh, I know Pep very well. He's a fantastic <laughs> manager. <laughs> and I know that his teams uh, always try to play good football. Uh, they play this possession, position uh, football that is very well known in, in, in Pep uh, uh, analysis of the game and understanding of the game so you know they have quality players of course they have uh, they can make two teams and two, these two teams they can equally win the the Champions League you know they spend a lot of uh, money in the last 10-12 uh, years you know to achieve a moment like now they finally did it and uh, you know of course this it looks like it's their time as well to win their first Champions League but believe me Chelsea will not make it easy for them <laughs> Sesk, you've been interacting with fans here in Africa on social media through Heineken's hashtag UCL uh, live campaign. Um, and I'm seeing a lot of fans here from Ghana. I've seen some fans from Kenya, South Africa as well, dropping their flags in the comments. What have you enjoyed most about your interactions on socials with these fans? No, you just said it. I mean, engaging with everyone around the world. I mean, we're all fans. We're football fans that we like to talk about football. We like to analyze the game, uh, predict the game or the man of the match. Uh, I love this kind of uh, guesses and, and, and games. And, uh, you know, for sure, it's been a fantastic pleasure. Now the best is coming on the... For the final but uh, I believe you know that it's a fantastic tool to really have fun enjoy and uh, this beautiful game and uh, hopefully you know whoever uh, enjoys the winning will be will be fantastic but uh, also for Chelsea fans or Man City fans whoever loses will be also a fantastic experience. Um, it reminds me that we are interacting on social media as fans and we, you know, can't be in the stadiums. And it, it's made me wonder, what has been your best experience, your, the best atmosphere you've experienced in the Champions League? Um, that's difficult to say because I think uh, I played like uh, 112 games or something like that. For me to go through all of them, it's not right now in one second, it's, it's not easy. But uh, I do remember one game at the Camp Nou when we lost against Milan uh, away. We won 2-0 and we had to really play an amazing game to come back and win 3-0 at Camp Nou. I remember the atmosphere that day was frenetic, was fantastic, uh, outstanding. It's probably one of the best that, that I can remember. 
beating Barcelona at the Emirates uh, with Arsenal was fantastic. It was probably the loudest I, I heard the, the Emirates um, in, in my time there. So, yeah, I have a, a few to choose from. But uh, Champions League is always special. Believe me, it's always a special night, special moment. And everywhere you play, you know, you realize it's, it's, it's proper top level football. Elite football, indeed. That's why we love it so much. Um, what are some of your other best memories? Personally, the best game for you. I know you've been talking about atmosphere, but what are some of the best games for you personally? Um, I don't know. Uh, again, uh, I would have to choose. I remember a really good game at a very young age when we played against uh, Juventus. Uh, it was the last year at uh, Highbury. And, uh, you know, I think uh, we beat them 2 nil, and I had an assist and a, and a goal. So, you know, uh, I was only 18 and we were playing against uh, a top, top team with Fabio Capello as a manager uh, in a very experienced Juventus side. So, yeah, probably this one or in San Siro where we, we won as well with Arsenal for the first English club ever to win at San Siro. So, you know, it was a, a great moment with Barcelona reaching semi-finals uh, with Chelsea when we played against Barcelona at Stamford Bridge I think we even was a 1-1 but we I thought we deserved to win that game we were so so good so really as I said before difficult to choose you mentioned Arsenal quite a few times and I've seen quite a few um, Gunners fans here on this chat so let's talk about them tonight a quick prediction uh, for your other former team who's in a European semi-final tonight what do you think we're going to see in that game um, difficult. Uh, I think, uh, to be fair, Arsenal have a really good potentially like uh, opportunity to go to the final because I felt in the first game they were lucky. I think Arsenal could have lost uh, at least three 0 because we are all were so so good and with the uh, men down it was a very tough game. But they reacted very well. They scored the goal, and for this reason, I believe that Arsenal will go through tonight. You are just back to the UEFA Champions League. You've obviously been giving your predictions on man of the match. And you've called quite a few of them correctly. N'Golo Conte is someone you've backed big time on Twitter as part of hashtag Heineken UCL Live. And it's all over the newspapers. Just uh, your thoughts on him. What did you say? He's, he's like two players. Yeah, I mean, uh, when, you, when I call N'Golo Conte for man of the match, you know that 60% you are safe because he's got a big, big chance of uh, of winning the world easily because he's a guy that always performs. It doesn't, for him, it doesn't matter if you are training, if you play a friendly game or league game, cup uh, or Champions League. You know, he's a boy that uh, he always gives his best. He's very humble. He works really hard. And uh, I'm very happy for him. Uh, I think he struggled the last year and a half, something like that, with a lot of injuries. And maybe he didn't look like he was at his best, but I think now he's recovered his form, you know, he looks fit, he looks, uh, you know, energetic with a lot of quality as usual. So I'm very happy for him because uh, he's a boy that uh, works very hard and deserves it very well. So since you've been getting so many man of the match predictions, right, give us an early tip on who you think is going to stand out in that final. <sighs> You have to give me a bit more time because there's still a few weeks. So many things can happen. <laughs> but um, why not? You could go. You could well go with Angolo once again uh, for uh, Man City. There's obviously a lot of uh, top quality. You know, with Mares, mm -hmm. he's been showing it with uh, Kevin De Bruyne, Phil Foden, like we were uh, talking about him before. And for Chelsea, you know. I think I can tell you the team that will play for Man City, but with Chelsea, it's a bit more different. I think I have two or three doubts of who could start the game, so I don't want to get carried away and say someone that after will not be playing in the final. But definitely, I think uh, Mason Mount can be very, very important as well for uh, for Chelsea going forward, especially. And we're going to see a curtain raiser for the final address rehearsal on Saturday. Uh, how, how difficult is it actually to be playing a team that you play regularly and that you know so well in the final. How's that going to affect the game? Yes, it will affect it very, very much because you you well mentioned now that they, they, they know each other so well. They play maybe, I think they played semi-final of the Cup as well a few weeks back. So it will be the fourth, fifth time maybe that they play against each other this season. 
they will know each other very well, study very well. So that makes it even more difficult. And I don't think actually the um, the coaches they like that because they know each other so well that so many every little detail can count in games like this and for this reason i believe it will be a very tight game yes yeah, so a very close one you predicted mm. yeah definitely final question about some of your champions league memories um who was the toughest opponent you ever faced in a champions league game um good question um I think uh, the Man United where Cristiano Ronaldo, Wayne Rooney, Rio Ferdinand, Vidic, Paul Scholes, uh, Tevez, that, that Man United side that they actually went, went on to win it was uh, fantastic. I mean, their contra-attacks were, you know, something that you could not stop uh, at any point and, you know, it was... Uh, a very tough, tough game to play against them, and uh, also definitely the Milan side uh, with Kaká, with Pato, with David Beckham. Uh, I think Paris Saint Germain as well. Sometimes they were difficult to play against because they have a lot of quality. Uh, but yeah, I mean, every Champions League game is a top level game. This is for sure. You see the difference in domestic leagues and Champions Leagues. That's for sure. You you always feel there's something special about this game. So. So lots of them, lots of them. And we've talked about the two finalists, but who else have you enjoyed watching in the Champions League this season? I know it's another tricky one because there's so many elite level players, some of the best in the world, but who's really, uh, who have you enjoyed watching? Well, I think Bayern Munich, uh, you know, I know it wasn't the, their year, uh, it was last year, but they are a very strong team with a lot of quality, they play offensive football, they're very well balanced and uh, I think they could, you know, at the beginning of, se of the season you could have said that they could go on to win it again and of course they, they couldn't because they, they faced another good team, but um, I enjoy them watching, yeah. And final question before I let you go. Uh, there is a prelude to the final. We said it is a curtain raiser dress rehearsal on Saturday. We'll show that game live on Supersport as we do all the Premier League games. How do you think that's going to go? The ante's up a little bit now that it's a, a dress rehearsal for the final, isn't it? Yeah, no, no, definitely. I mean, uh, they play again and, you know, it... It will not be the same because Man City, they are already champions and Chelsea are playing for a... It's a big game for them, actually, because, you know, they are playing for the Champions League next year and this is always that brings a bit more pressure uh, to you. But I think uh, Man City will want to send the message as well, you know. They will want to put a, a strong team out. They will want to say, hey, we're here. We're not playing friendly games, you know. We want to try and beat you and not letting you go into the Champions League to play a little bit with their head and put fears, you know, in, in, in Chelsea's players. But, uh, you know, big game for Chelsea. And uh, if they really want Champions League, uh, you know, they will, they will have to, to win it. Cesc, thank you so much for your time. It's been amazing interacting with you. And I can see a lot of love being shown here in the comments from all over the continent. Um, I know it was your birthday in the week, but you have been... Uh, gracious enough to give us a gift. One lucky fan's going to win a signed Cesc Fabrega shirt. Yep. And I've got that courtesy of Heineken South Africa and part of the hashtag Heineken UCL uh, live campaign to give away on my Twitter account tomorrow at Julia Stewart underscore SA. Thank you so much, Cesc. Goodbye. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure. Take care.